Hebrews 4 declares why we read this book. Our goal this year at Calvary is to develop fully devoted followers of Christ. Our entire focus this year is on the word fully and the word devoted. Everybody say fully. Everybody say fully. Everybody say devoted. Now, these are key words for us because the big idea is that each one of us would embrace this idea of discipleship impacting every area, the whole person, every part of our life, every day, so that we live a different life that brings glory back to God. Now, our mission as a local church is not done until everybody who walks in this house, watches us online, is transformed by the Word of God, so much so that we can transform Chicago land across Illinois, across the U.S., and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That is the goal of being transformed and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. We're here today to be taught the Word of God. Now, second, Psalm 119 says it this way. It says, your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Why am I saying all this? The word of God is essential to building a life that sustains the storms of life. And our focus today in Luke chapter 6 is upon building a life that is storm prepared. Now, all of us in life have faced or will face difficult times, true or false. If you've lived in this life for more than a minute, you have faced a difficult moment. And here's some awareness for you today. The difficult times will always be among us, but that's why the Word of God has got to be within us because this book helps us to sustain ourselves in difficult times. So we understand this is the goal of Scripture. Now, in saying that, discipleship begins with hearing, and then it ends with doing. Be a hearer, yes, be a doer, absolutely, because if you just hear and you do not do, the Bible says, we'll see it later on in James, that you actually deceive yourself. You think you're growing, but you're not. Do not assume that coming to church by itself will make you a strong disciple of Jesus Christ. You have to come in this environment and be taught the word and go out and do the word, and that's what Jesus talked about today in Luke chapter 6. Now, last week, listen close. We talked about inspecting ourselves. We talked about the speck in the eye and the plank in the eye. We talked about getting the plank out of our eye and not focusing on somebody else's speck in their eye. And Jesus, in essence, was saying, hey, inspect yourself today. He says to us to inspect the foundation that we build our life upon. Go to Luke chapter 6, verse 43. We'll kick off there. And talk about trees and fruits first of all. Here we go. No good tree bears bad fruit. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Makes sense, right? Each tree recognize, is recognized then by its own fruit. That's fair. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man, watch this close, brings out evil stored up in his heart. From the mouth speaks whatever the heart is full of. Whatever is inside of you, guess where it comes out? It comes out of your mouth. Therefore, you can never say, I didn't know that was in there when it comes out. If it's in your mouth, it was first in your heart. Okay, now, let's go to verse 46. Here we go. This is our focus today. Watch this verse 46. This first line is enough right here. We could could almost read this and all go home. But we're not going to do that. Don't worry. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And the emphasis, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And what's the rest part say? And not do what I say. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? and not do what I say. That is such an interesting verse because the emphasis on Lord, Lord would insinuate a strong affinity or identity with him being their Lord in their mind. But in essence, what he's saying is, you're saying in your mind that I'm your Lord, but in practicality, I'm not any of that. 
Now, this is Jesus' words. This is amazing because this would almost be like if you're in a marketplace somewhere or a shopping area and a complete strange young man walks up to you and goes, hey, dad, good to see you. And you'd be like, you ain't my kid. Hey, dad, can I borrow some money? I need to go shopping. I don't know who you are. You're not getting my money. Or, or, or you're somewhere else and somebody you don't even, never met in your entire life walks up and goes, hey, um, can I have 100 bucks because I'm going to call you dad, dad, and I need your money. And you would look at that person and go, you are crazy. Now, if your own kid walked up, you would go, uh, okay, you might be hesitant for sure, but you would at least get the idea that I have some relationship here and I'm going to give the kid something possibly if that's how the relationship exists at this point in the journey. But my point is, the idea of calling him Lord and not doing what he says is a complete oxymoron. That's right. Because the entire idea of being someone's Lord is what? You do what they say, and there is no argument. Now keep reading the text here, verse 47. For everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice... I will show you what they are like. Notice these words again close. Everyone, everybody say everyone. Everyone who hears my words, who comes to me and hears my words and does what? Puts them into practice. Three steps. Come to Jesus. Second step, hear his word. Third step, put what you've heard into what? Practice. Verse 48, they will be like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation upon the rock. And when a flood came, not if a flood came, but when a flood came, the torrent struck and that house, but it could not shake it because it was well built. Verse 49, but the one who hears my words and does not put them into what? Practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete, or one would say its fall was great. Because clearly this is not about a physical house as much as their individual lives. So when you look at this and you start seeing the picture unfold before your eyes, it's really clear on the front end that there's a couple of quick thoughts. First of all, to hear and to do is the essence of discipleship. That's what it is. If you want to declare yourself as a disciple of Jesus Christ, then that means you don't just hear, but it means you do call him Lord, Lord, yes, but be sure to do what he says. Secondly, to hear and not to do is the essence of deception. Right. Now, deception is a very spiritual conversation because when the spirit of deception comes in, by the way, the enemy of our soul, the devil, he literally, one of his main weapons is deception. He's a massive deceiver. He deceives us even today. There is deception run amok in our world today, and the devil is behind all of it because that's how he operates. Woe to those who are deceived. And listen, the only way to know if you're not deceived is if you're building your house up on the right foundation or not. Deception is crazy, and it happens all the time, and each one of us can be deceived. James chapter 1, I love this text. You've heard it before, 122 through 25. Do not merely listen to the word, he says, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do it is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like, verse 25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be what? Blessed in what they do. Who would like to have a life that's blessed in all that you do? 
It's right here. We read this back in the Psalms. The psalmist said, if you keep his words, you have a blessed life. It's clear in Scripture that the blessing of God resides upon those who hear the word and go in and do the word. So what's the big deal? Why, why do I focus on this so much today in the series that launches our year and we talk about full devotion? Listen, if you want to live a life of discipleship, understand a couple things. Discipleship empowers others to see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 talks about this. You are a light. You are the salt. Let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and what? Glorify your Father in heaven. Discipleship gives you the power to live a life that brings glory back to God. Secondly, said discipleship is being the salt of the earth and prevents sinful living on your part in you and around you. Salt of the earth is here to stop decay. It's to preserve the culture, society, preserve righteousness. And discipleship gives you a life that will sustain itself in the storms of this life. When we think about all this, Luke chapter 6 gives us the tale of two different houses. Two different lives, you could say. In my tenure as a pastor, I have... Um, and I'm, I'm uh, see, I'm, I'm 48. I've been pastoring in ministry uh, 25, 26 years. And in my journey with people, I have yet to find somebody who didn't face a storm. But I found a lot of people that sustained through difficulty. I found a lot of folks who held on tight to Jehovah Jireh when they lost a job. I have found a lot of folks who hold on tight to Jehovah Rapha when they were sick and in bed. I have found a lot of folks who held on tight to Jehovah Shalom when they were facing a time of difficulty and lacking peace in their life. And I could go on and on because I have seen the power of people who have stood upon the word of God in their difficult time and they have sustained. Yes, the wind began to blow. Yes, the rain came down. Yes, there was tension. Yes, there was thoughts looking out the window. But in the end, the house stood tall because anything built upon the word of God will sustain in the storms of this life. Every person in the story that Jesus told, one was building a house, two, they were hearing his words, and three, they all faced a storm. I would also throw this in there. I would suggest that each one of them thought that how they built their house was sufficient enough. Nobody ever plans out to fail. They just often fail to dig deep enough to build a foundation. Or they put a foundation on the wrong substance in this life. For many of us, we have built our foundation on the culture we live in. We, we, we have built our hopes on something that's very temporal. We have built our allegiance to things in this temporal life, and we have forgot the idea that we are living for an eternal purpose, not just an earthly one. And I've watched people build a life on what they thought would sustain. But in the end, when the wind picked up, when the pressure began to increase, the house they had built began to crumble and fall. Let me say it to you this way. Let me bring it back to your life real fast before we go any further. Right now, right now, you are building the house that you will live in during a storm. The question is, will it hold up or not? And I don't know because I only know part of your journey. You only know part of my journey. Journey. We've all seen people in my position in the pulpits of life come crashing down super fast. We've seen people in the chairs that you sit in today come crashing down super fast. People that you thought was right in line with God's plan, all of a sudden everything turned loose. You know why? 
because we don't really know what someone's life is built upon until the wind picks up. All of us here at some level, we live on the surface side, and I want to challenge you today to make sure that your spiritual life is not a surface conversation, but a foundation conversation. Make sure that you're living deeper than the skin level. Make sure what you're holding on to runs deeper than the consumer level or the preferential level or the, uh, or the materialistic side of the faith. Make sure that what you're holding on to is deeply driven down into the word of God that you can sustain the storms of life. Be sure you're digging deep enough into the word of God. Everybody in the story built the house. Everybody had the storm, everybody heard the word. Everybody in the story thought they were building on a sufficient surface. But notice this in the story. There's the word not in this story, N-O-T. One of the houses did not fall. One of the houses that fell, it fell because they heard but did not do. So my question for you today is, which side of the knot are you on right now? Are you on the not falling side or are you on the not doing side? Because when you hear the word and you do the word, your house will not fall. When you hear the word and you ignore the word, your house will not stand. Protecting your foundation is everything. Protecting what you build your life upon is crucial because you're going to face storms in life. Again, James chapter 1 says, do not be just a hearer, be a doer. The difference is in the doing. The difference is in the doing. If you just hear, if you just come to church, if you just open up the video, if you just listen to a podcast and don't apply any of it, then you're not building anything. Listen, hear about forgiveness and start forgiving. Hear about loving and start loving. Hear about serving and start serving. Hear about giving and start giving. Hear about the Bible and read the Bible. Understand the power of hearing is lived out in the doing because that's how the journey begins to grow and transform your life. We fool ourselves. We think we can just hear and never do anything. Every time we open the word of God, we face a decision. When you come to church, you're not just here to sing. You're not just here to meet your friends. That's all good stuff. You're not just here to hear the word of God taught. That's certainly good stuff. But you are here today to make a decision. Make a decision to live a life for Christ. Make a decision to apply this to your life. Make a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Everybody here makes a different choice, ain't no doubt, but all of us today make a choice. Every one of us right now is building a house. Here's my question for you. Is your house storm ready as of today? Now, I, I, know the, I know the human nature. I know the church. I know, I mean, I, listen, I'm, I'm as churchy as they get. I've been in church my entire life. I know how to answer the right questions. And so I know when I say, is your house storm ready? You're going to all go, absolutely it is. <laughs> is your house storm ready? Hey, Hear my heart today. Dig down deep enough that when the wind picks up around you, you'll be standing firm in who God is. Remember, discipleship is living a life that transforms you so much that you transform those around you over time. It's not about necessarily going on the street corner. Nothing wrong in that. But it's about being the gospel in the marketplace. It's about living a life that makes a difference in the schoolhouse. It's about living a life that's different in the community. That's how people know you have a house built on different substance in life. My prayer for us as church family that we will all grow in this seed. Proverbs teaches us this. Proverbs says you prepare for the next season, the current season. Have you noticed yet that life is a collection of seasons? Anybody here been through a different season before? Now, all of us live on this continual journey that life is moving and not stopping. And I pray for you today, Calvary Church family, that you're building your house deep enough 
that when the storms hit, you can stand back and go, it's going to be okay. Thank you for watching the Calvary Church YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you made a decision to follow Christ today, be sure to text CC New Life to 94000. Someone from our team will reach out to you, say hey, and talk a little bit about what that decision means for you. For more information on our church, head to calvarynaperville.org or follow us on social media by clicking the links in the description. Hope to see you in person soon. Have a great day.